G'day, uh, Tony here from Moocha Hunters. Dyer have asked me to answer a few questions specific to land-based fishing, so uh, thanks to those people that put some questions up, I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully it's going to help you out a wee bit. So the main question I uh, received was around how to choose a land-based spot, um, what to look for, um, yeah, where do, you, where do you basically start? So uh, for me, if I'm looking for a new area to target, um, I'm usually jumping onto Google Earth and I'm looking for that broken bit of coastline. So an area that's got lots of bommies and rocks uh, and quite a packed area with heaps of kelp around is what I'm looking for. Uh, when I first started rock fishing, I'd always go to the furthest point and look for the deepest water off a clean ledge. Whereas now with my snapper fishing, I aim for the real shallow areas and I look for the most gnarly, broken bit of coast that I can. It's amazing where you can find snapper, uh, you know, within a meter of water can hold some really good fish. So you don't always have to go for that furthest point to, to get amongst some good snapper action. Lots of kelp, lots of broken rocks uh, with narrow guts and things in between is where I tend to find uh, my better fish. When choosing a king for a spot, uh, slightly different. So the way I think about finding kingfish spots is I think about the, the kingfish over summer uh, traveling right in close to the, the rocks around the coast. Uh, and then I look at the points or the areas that the kingfish will have to swim past in order to get to say the next bay or to get in and out of a harbor. Um, so I basically just imagine that the fish are hugging the coastline and if there's a point or a rock or some bit of structure that maybe juts out a little bit further than the rest. I think about the fish having to round that point um, and that's where I tend to start. Uh, the other thing with those areas is they tend to have the most current because the water's got to shift around that point or that ledge. And as we know, kingfish love moving water. So if you can find that ledge that's got that full on pressure wave of the tide running past, uh, that's going to be a, a, a good place to start. The other thing with kingfish is uh, the, the spots that I choose over the course of a season uh, really depends on where the bait is holding. So early in the season it might be more in uh, shallower areas where the kingfish are hunting grey mullet. So if you see big schools of grey mullet holding off a point or holding off a, an area, um, that's where I'm going to be. And then later in the season, it might be more to do with anchovies and where the kawai are holding. So where the bait is, is also really important. Cool, so the next question was, what are my favorite tides to fish? Do I fish the outgoing or the incoming? So what I've learned over the years with rock fishing is it's really dependent on the spot or on the ledge. I used to sort of follow religiously the fish two hours either side of the high tide. Uh, whereas now I've learned with some spots they fish way better on the low tide or the last part of the outgoing uh, whereas other spots do fish better closer to the high tide so it's really just about spending lots of time in one area uh, and learning which part of the tide works best. If I was going to a new area and I had no idea I think if I had the ideal time of the tide it would be fishing the outgoing tide so I'd aim to get to a spot at the top of the tide and then fish the entire outgoing. Uh, my thought behind that is that your burley is sort of disappearing away from you as the tide's going out, uh, which is only gonna bring more fish in because your burley's going further. Uh, that's the way I think about it, so. Uh, Cameron Kerod here asks, what bag do I use to carry my gear? Basically, I've got three bags and it totally depends on what I'm up to. Uh, my go-to rock fishing bag is definitely the Just Another Fisherman backpack. These things are bulletproof. I've had this one for, I think, about three seasons now. Uh, they're waterproof. They have more than enough space to pack a whole heap of gear. They've got the slot on the side, which is perfect for a moocher mat. 
super comfortable, perfect bag for like a morning of lure casting, soft baits, stick baits, um, bit of lunch, bit of water, etc. Uh, it's all gonna fit in there. Yeah, if I'm going for more of like a old school just bait and burly session and I'm gonna carry loads of burly in um, and pilchers and stuff, then this is the bag I take. It's just an old tramping pack. Um, these bags obviously designed really well for carrying a whole lot of weight. Uh, they sit on top of your hips more, uh, so it's way more comfortable. The other thing with this bag is, you know, if pilly juice leaks out by the end of the session, no big drama. It just hose the thing at the end of the day, and I'm not too fussed about it. So that's my that's my bait and burly bag, pretty much. I've just got a short window, and I'm just going for a flick around the rocks with some soft baits, or I'm going for a squid fish. Then the tech tackle case from Just Another Fisherman is ideal. Um, you just fling it over your shoulder. Uh, the good thing about this one is that if you want to change soft baits or if you want to tie a new jig head on, you just fling the bag around and it's all right here. Nice and easy, you don't have to stop and take a backpack off. So it's perfect if you're going to cover quite a bit of coast. Uh, it's not like you have to stop and park up with all your gear. You're just walking along and this bag is uh, out of the way. It's not gonna get in the way of casting and working the lure and stuff. And then when you do need to change anything, it's just right there. So uh, yeah, another good option. And those are pretty much the three bags. Okay, so there was a question around uh, soft baits that I use and jig head sizes. Uh, so what I've been fishing recently are the new uh, minnow shape from Bait Junkie in the larger sizes. So there's now a 4.2 inch and a 6.2 inch. Uh, this color here, the baby bass, in both sizes has been dynamite lately. <laughs> I usually start big, so I'll start with a seven inch in the paddle tail or a seven inch jerk shad. And then if I don't get action on that, then I'll drop down to one of the 4.2 inch sizes. And then if I'm still struggling, then I'll go one of the curly grubs. Uh, and these often produce the goods, these things here. As far as jig head sizes go, uh, my approach to soft baiting off the rocks is always to give the lure as much hang time as it sinks down through the water column. So I try and go as light as possible. I'm usually fishing like a quarter ounce jig head, um, which seems to be like a general go-to. Um, there's times if the current's really strong or if it is quite deep that I'll bump it up to a half ounce. But in most scenarios, I'll fish a quarter ounce. So fishing the big, got birds on the roof. These things here, they got a massive profile and then they got this huge paddle tail. So, you know, when this thing sinks, this thing's the, the tail's just going berserk. And if you can combine it with a light enough jig head that it's just wafting down, uh, it's very hard for Big Snapper to resist that. So, the last question I'll talk about was um, around burley and whether or not burley is a must. Uh, so, I definitely use burley a lot and it does tend to bring better results. This is probably my favorite thing off the rocks is is being able to see the action unfold in front of you So a lot of the time we're actually pitching baits or soft baits at big snapper that have come right up to the burley uh, Which is bloody exciting. So um, Definitely using burley helps a lot. Um, I have to say though that it is probably more satisfying going out without any burley and truly hunting for the fish by walking a stretch of coast and just flicking soft baits into likely looking areas. Uh, there's just something about going out with very minimal gear, no bait, no burley, and just really using your sort of your skill set and a bit of nous to, to pluck good fish out of a bit of coastline. So yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've got one session and you're just throwing everything into that and it's all gonna happen, then certainly taking burley will help. Uh, if you're wanting to test yourself and you really like a challenge, then going out with no burley and just really trying to pick the areas that you're casting into uh, can be really satisfying and it's, yeah, it's a really cool way to fish. Cool, well, I hope that uh, answered a few of those questions and it was of some use to some of you. Um, more than happy to answer more questions about rock fishing. Just hit me up at Moocher Hunters. Cheers.